Oh, hi there. I <laughs> didn't see you. My name is Mike. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. Today, we're going to build something cool. I got in the mail this antenna. This is the KM4ACK NFED half wave antenna for 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters. Let's uh, open it up. I'll show you all the parts, show you how to put it together. We'll go outside and tune it up. And uh, yeah, I think you guys are really gonna like this one. Stay tuned. Thank you. All right, so let's see what we got here. Comes in a nice little bubble wrapped package. A little thank you letter. It's very nice. KM4ACK card. Personally autographed by KM4ACK himself. So that's a collector's item. Yeah, definitely have to keep that. And we have some bits and bobs in here. Some, some yellow wire, which I actually like a lot. Uh, some high vis stuff. I've been using black wire and Anytime you put an antenna up out in the field, somebody wants to walk right into it. So someone will probably still walk into this, but at least it's yellow. Ooh, another sticker. And then we've got some instructions. And inside here is the actual 3D printed wire winder. So this is pretty neat. And then we've got our BNC connector. You can Specify if you want an SO239 or a BNC. I went with BNC. Let's crack this open and see what's in here. All kinds of stuff. Looks like we got a little bit of uh, doingy, a little dog bone there, some magnet wire, zip ties, hardware, toroid and capacitor. That's a nice, uh, nice size toroid there. Probably a little bit bigger than the quarter. So yeah, let's put this thing together. I am very, very excited for this antenna. I'll tell you what. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is wrap this toroid. So the first thing we gotta do is measure about eight inches. I'm gonna go a little higher. I go about eight and a quarter, eight and a half, something like that. And then we're gonna fold this over. So now, whoops. I want to measure about two and a half inches up here and I'm just going to grab this with some pliers but be careful not to nick the uh, enamel coating there and then we take a screwdriver and start twisting that looks good so maybe pliers isn't a good idea because I nicked that enamel but I already screwed it up once see <laughs> so we're gonna go forth I don't think that's gonna matter though because this other one's not next so hopefully we don't short anything anyway so now we're going to actually wrap the toroid and we're gonna do two turns of this coiled part and then another 12 of the loose wire going around so here's a there's a diagram that shows you how to do that just putting it in, that's one turn. And I wanna try and keep this pretty tight. Although I do not have a lot of experience wrapping toroids. So that was pretty easy, all right. So now let's wrap this uh, a bunch more times this way. So there's turn three. Now here's where we make the big move. We're gonna cross over to here and then come back and theoretically we're gonna end up at the 12 o'clock position. So this is turn eight going across. And 14. Ta-da! And now the next thing I want to do is install 
our BNC. So this bit just unscrews and then we've got this little, this is what the uh, ground is going to connect to that little tail thing. And then there's a little lock nut there that I suppose goes on the bottom. I don't know. So you've got a recessed part here and a not recessed part. So you want to stick the connector through so the part you're actually going to solder is on the flat part there. And then we're going to put our little ground connector thingy on there. And a washer. Maybe. Go on. And our nut. We actually want to bend this up a little bit. So you can see this ground tab is bent up a little bit. And then tighten her down. All right. For my next trick, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to try and attach the toroid to the thing. I'm going to not do them all tight right now because there ain't no turning back and he doesn't supply any extra speeds. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of loosely get them in here so I can make sure that I have this placed where I want it because this needs to, this part needs to kind of go over here to this hole because we're going to hook some hardware up there in a minute, but it actually looks pretty good. This is a really neat design. I will say that. And we can cut these with our flush cutters. Pretty. Now the next step, we need to trim these wires because they're too long. So this single wire is going to go to the center. And then the twisted wire is going to connect to this ground tab. But we don't need them this long. So... We're just going to measure a little bit and cut. That might still be too long. Yeah, it probably is. Let's cut another. There. So that'll be good there. The center conductor, we actually want to have enough so it kind of lays down over here just so it doesn't interfere. I mean, I guess we could just put it over top, but. Jason's video shows doing it this way, so we're going to do it this way. He made the darn thing. So you just kind of put a little kink in the wire just to kind of test it there. I think that should be good. So we can cut that little bit off. And that's just going to fit right in there. But before we solder these, because this is magnet wire, we have to sand the red enamel off. Now I do not own sandpaper. Some guys recommend just scraping it with a knife, but I prefer power tools. See how that made quick work of that? Got all the enamel off. Let's do it to this one. Good enough. Now we're going to grab our capacitor and we're gonna solder these two together, but we don't need all this metal, so I'm gonna clip some of this. There. Make that a bit, bit tidier there. We've gotta solder the center connector and the capacitor to both of these, something like that. So let the games begin. It's flowing. It's flowing. That's a deep uh, reservoir there. All right. That looks good. Now we can add the ground. Now 
Now Jason puts hot glue on all this, but I don't own a hot glue gun, so I'm not gonna do that step, but you can if you want. Just kind of seals it all up. I might at some point in my life buy a hot glue gun, but I really don't wanna own one. Next is this bit of wire. So we're actually gonna cut this because a ring terminal is gonna go right here. So we can kind of cut that to eh, around the center of this hole. And in our little bag of tricks is a little ring nut. So we're gonna sand this off here, crimp and solder that. Good enough, it's shiny. We're gonna solder this too, but I like a nice crimp. And for good measure, I'm gonna heat this bad Jackson up and solder it as well. Now we're going to secure this. I'm gonna take a nut and a washer and stick it through. Keep it out of the way of this little ridge though, or groove rather. And then we're gonna come around to the other side. Another washer and a nut. And we're really gonna tighten her down. Now we're gonna take our doingy cable and we're gonna stick it through this smaller hole, the inside one. We're gonna make a couple knots, just little pretzel knots, so it doesn't pull through. So let's just do another one. Cinch that up. Yeah, something like that. And then we'll do the same thing to the other side, because when this wraps around, it's just gonna go lock in there so it keeps it in. A nice and tight. Not tying with K at MRD. All right, that should be good. And we can tidy up our ends with a little heat. And now it does that. And now the last thing to do is add the wire. So this already comes pre-connected uh, pre just like this and we're gonna take this is, so this guy is like the strain relief. So we're gonna take, and you'll notice there's like, this one's bigger, this one's smaller. So we're gonna put the bigger one on first and then the smaller one on. And then our wing nut, maybe. Screws her down like such. And we have an antenna. Now all we need to do is go outside and trim this down a little bit and get her resonant. We should have this angled in like this. So when we wrap the wire thing around it, it'll hold it like that. That makes sense. All right, so let's go outside and get her up in the air and start cutting some wire and get it resonant. Okay, so the antenna comes with this little dog bone that Jason has 3D printed. <laughs> Even as this km4ack.com in there, that's pretty neat. Um, I'm not gonna use this quite yet, I am just going to wrap this wire through this carabiner, this S-clip, whatever the heck these things are called, a couple times, because I just want to check where it's resonant right now, and then we'll make some cuts accordingly. So I'm going to hoist this up in the air just like that, take a reading on the uh, analyzer, see where it's at, and we'll come back and trim it. All right, so here's the initial reading on 40. I'm going to make it right for the middle of the phone portion for extra. So... Uh, Let's cut a little bit off and see where we get. All right, so after many a clipping, I was aiming for 7.212. And we can see we're pretty darn good. I got about 1.4, that's about as low as I can get. Sometimes you'll see it'll dip to 1.3. But it's, uh, it's pretty good across the entire 40 meter band. Homes are a little higher than I'd like to see them. Obviously we wanna go for 50 but I'm gonna take that for now. Let's take a look at 20 meters. So 20 looks good all the way across the band. 
20 looks better than 40. And then we can go up to 15. Looking pretty good there. A little bit higher. That's kind of typical for NFED half waves. It's not going to be perfect on every band, but totally usable. And then we'll go to 10 meters. 10 is a little high in the band, but again, that's kind of to be expected. Down in the sideband portion, we're like two, two to one. It gets lower as we get up towards the higher uh, part there, but pretty broad banded. So not too bad. And just to show you how I have it installed, I have it running as a sloper, so it's going there. Can't really see the wire, but it's kind of going over that branch there and uh, up to the top of my 43 foot MFJ mast and running it in an inverted V. I've had uh, about the same results, so you can deploy it in a couple different configurations. Shouldn't have any problems with it at all. Uh, so very happy. And then finally, the last thing we have to do is put on this little dog bone. So I just put a couple little overhand uh, pretzel knot things in there and that doesn't seem to be going anywhere. So it would be nice if he would have included a ferrule to maybe just crimp this somehow, uh, just to tidy it up. But this method works, no problem. And when we're done, we can wrap it up. So we simply use our figure eight. Make sure this is not <laughs> like wrapped around and connected because he won't get it out. Uh, but we can wrap it in our figure eight configuration for easy storage and deployment. And this, uh, this, this winder, this is, it's a pretty good thickness. It's nice and rigid. So very pleased with the quality of this antenna. Very, very nice job, Jason. All right, then we can take our doingy, wrap it around. Nice, perfect, love it. And I just wanted to show you how much wire I ended up cutting off. So uh, what do we have? Five, six, seven, eight times I cut it up and down, up and down, which equates to one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, almost 12, uh, almost 12 bow fangs we had to cut off of this. Well, there we have it, gang. Uh, pretty fun build, pretty awesome looking antenna. Can't wait to get it on the air. Uh, 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters. Uh, that's fantastic for me. I'm mostly on 40 and 20, so these types of antennas are great for me just because I can switch back and forth between 40 and 20 and uh, have a nice, perfectly resonant antenna. So uh, thank you, Jason, for sending this to me. I really do appreciate it. I really, really like this. Big fan, big fan. So <laughs> I will uh, put a link to Jason's website where you can get one of these. They're really inexpensive too, which is great. And uh, it's a great kit if you got clubs or something. Um, or even getting kids into building antennas and stuff, this is a really good thing to have. So anyway, thanks again. I do appreciate you watching another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff 73.